Okay, stock splits. A stock split is when the company increases the number of shares that it has outstanding. Um, just arbitrarily. It doesn't actually issue any more stock. It just says things like, we are, we are calling a two-for-one stock split. Um, so then for every share that you have, that share now becomes two shares. So I don't know that they actually, this says they actually issue additional shares, but I don't know if they do. I think you just know that you just on paper have double the shares that you'd had before. All right. Um, a reverse split does the opposite. It decreases. So if I did a one for two reverse stock split, then it cuts it in half. Okay. No entries are made. However, there usually is a memo entry showing impact on the equity section. Okay, because shares outstanding will increase with the stock split. Par value will decrease par value per share. because total par value remains the same. Okay, but everything, and it's not just shares outstanding, it's actually everything um, will increase. Authorized, issued, outstanding, everything would double if it was a two for one stock split. Okay, um, and corporations will do this sometimes because they want to affect the par value or the market value. All right, total market value will stay the same, which means that in a two for one split, that's just easy to do in my head, market value per share will drop by half. All right, so if the market value has gotten too high, then they'll flood the market with shares. Total market value will stay the same. The market value per share will drop, and then it makes it easier for the everyday person to buy that share of stock. All right, reverse stock split would do the opposite. Oh my gosh, excuse me. All right, if a corporation pays a liquidating dividend, this is really a return on in, of an investment. So if they don't have the legal capital pay it, to pay a dividend and they pay one anyway, then it comes out of the capital, the paid in capital section, and it's a return of your investment. All right. And it usually only happens when they're going out of business. What's up next? I think prior period adjustments are next. Lots of little things in this chapter. All right, prior period adjustments. All right, PPA, prior period adjustments, are made to the beginning balance of retained earnings. to fix any errors that have been discovered in the previous year. Okay, so, well, change in accounting principles, change in accounting and correction of errors. Uh, actually, we get, I thought there was a whole other chapter on this, but there might be on the change in principles, change in accounting entity and correction of errors. And we just briefly get into it here. The other chapter is probably a little more um, detailed. Okay, so in this one, in 2019, 
Riker Corp discovers that it did not accrue 10000 of interest expense for 2018. So in, I'm sorry, in, 20, in 2018, they did not make the following entry. Interest expense and interest payable. Okay, for ten thousand. So expenses were too low, net income too high. Liabilities too low and equity too high. Equity is too high because net income is too high, which affects <laughs> retained earnings. Okay, and it also affects taxes. In this case, um, it affects 30% tax rate, so there's a $3,000 um, tax effect. So let me let me write that over here. I also did not do um, well. I'm just going to write down here actually. Income taxes were too high by three thousand. Okay, because their taxable income was higher by ten, so they paid more in income taxes. All right, so in 2019, to fix the error, all right, they, record, they need to record the liability on the balance sheet and um, the tax refund. The offset is to retained earnings because that is where net income ended up when the books were closed. Okay, so to fix it, we have to debit retained earnings because they're too high at the moment, so we have to debit them for the 10000 and record the interest payable. And then in this particular case, we're going to get a refund, so it's income tax refund receivable. And we're going to credit retained earnings because we took too much out income tax last year. So we're going to put it back. All right, so I have a net adjustment here of $7,000. Oh gosh. So my net adjustment. Is seven thousand. All right. So then, on the statement of retained earnings, or the retained earnings section, retained earnings section of it's really going to be of the statement of stockholders' equity. Have retained earnings as previously reported at the beginning of the year. In this case, it was 102,400. All right, my net here is is a seven thousand dollar credit uh, debit. So my net adjustment is a seven thousand dollar debit, which is a decrease to retained earnings. So less I'm 
I'm just going to put correction of an error. Correction of error from 2019. And this becomes adjusted retained earnings for January 1st of 20. And then you can you would continue on. I shouldn't put that underneath it. Then you would continue on with the rest of the stuff. Net income, dividends, whatever the case may be. All right, also, if comparative financial statements are presented, it's like if they issue five years worth of financial statements, you have to fix the one that had the error. So in this case, 2019s would need to be, I call it restated. with the correct numbers. All right, a restriction on retained earnings just means that um, part of the retained earnings is set aside so that it can't, it can't be used for dividends. What I don't want you to get confused about is that retained earnings doesn't necessarily mean that cash is sitting there. But if people see a positive balance in retained earnings, they're not getting their share of the profits. Um, and if a corporation is wanting to expand, they might restrict retained earnings so that people can see that they're not paying dividends because it's restricted for something else. So be familiar with that. They are unavailable. Okay, but remember, Retained earnings is not like a pile of cash. It's just a number on paper. Okay, so changes in shareholders' equity have to be reported. All right, so... We're going to get a little bit into here in stockholders' equity. I was trying to see if I wanted to do a whole, another whole video. Changes during the year must be reported as generally done a statement of stockholder equity. So if you go to look, you know in all the previous classes we always did the income statement, the statement of retained earnings, the balance sheet, and the statement of cash flows. Those are basically the things that we did. All right, instead of, if you go look at the annual report of a corporation, you're not going to see just a statement of retained earnings. You're going to see a statement of stockholders equity. I'm going to go find one. Hang on. Okay, so I'm here at walmart.com, and you can really find this for any type of big business, okay? If you go um, to their website, and you go, not there, go away. Oh, I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom for Walmart. You just kind of have to look around. Okay, so I went down to the very bottom of the screen, and one of the things here is get to know us, and it talks about our company. So I'm going to go to our company. I didn't I know Walmart had all these brands. Did y'all know that? Okay, and this brings up like their corporate site. So if you look right here, there's one for investors. We want, let's do financial information. I want an annual report. I 
and I'm just, I'm going to do the 2020. Let's look at the enhanced digital. Maybe I can. Okay. All right, so we have all this information. And as you scroll through, I was hoping it would give me a table of content. What the heck? This is not an annual report. Did I miss a table of contents? Oh. How do I get out of here? I don't want that. We're going to go to the PDF. All right, and they have headings on their PDFs usually. Typically, they all the corporations do. So you can scroll over here and just click where you want to go. All right, so I want to go to financial statements. Dude, it's not going to let me click on it. So where is that? Page 46. I don't want to give anybody a headache. Sorry. Okay, so here are the financial statements. They start off with the audit report, the in report on internal control, then you have the income statement. Notice it has three years worth of information. Then we have comprehensive income, starts with net income and does the rest of the stuff. Then we have the balance sheet. And then we have the statement of shareholders equity. Nowhere in here is their statement of cash flows. Nowhere in here is their statement of retained earnings. All right, on the statement of shareholders equity, it has a column for retained earnings. But the statement of shareholders equity shows, this, shows changes to all the equity accounts, okay? So it talks about the common stock, paid in excess, retained earnings, other comprehensive income, total Walmart equity, and then the non-controlling interest, all right, to get to total equity. Okay. All right, so I already saw that, and I already showed you that one, so I'm not going to flip through all these things. All right, the accumulated other comprehensive income, you know, we have to keep track of it. It's an element of, of equity. All right, and they talk about the things that it might include. So just kind of read this over. We're not going to do much other than know that you have to include it in other comprehensive income. I mean, included in the equity section. All right, retained earnings, um, miscellaneous changes in non-controlling interest. So donated assets, you might have donated assets that go in the donated capital account. The non-controlling interest is the part that is not owned by the controlling interest. So for instance, in this Walmart, we have This is probably public shareholders, and this non-controlling interest is probably Sam Walton's family who still own, you know, a portion of the company. If I had to take a wild guess, I don't know that for sure, but I would guess that's what it is. All right, so if if shareholders, like regular public shareholders, owned all 100% of the company, all we would see is this column here. All right, but these guys own a little bit. And I don't know how much it is, but anyway. All right, so that's that. That's what we looked at for Walmart, basically. And 
Everything needs to be footnoted. And then we get to earnings per share. This is going to be another video.